Hi there, in this video we'll be looking at emits as a way to vastly improve our HTML and CSS workflow. As you know, my favorite editor is VS Code, so let's look at how we can enable emits inside of VS Code. Well, to start with, emit is automatically enabled, but there are a few settings that I like to add, such as emit.trigger expansion on tab equal to true. And another one, which is emmet.show suggestions as snippets. I like to put that to true. And then we can use the editor.snippet suggestions equal to top. These are just a few settings that I like to use when I'm using Emmet inside of Visual Studio Code. If we wanted to, we could enable Emmet for other languages such as Jade, but at this point in time, we'll simply look at how we can get started with Emmet now that we've set up our environment. So what is Emmet? Well, let's just simply make a div with a class of my div. Well, that took us a few seconds to type out, but we could do this much simpler inside of VS Code and Emmet by simply using dot for the class and then the name of our class. You'll notice now that we have this pop-up and this is Emmet abbreviation, div class is equal to my div. And what we need to do now is hit tab and that will simply give us the same text. For example, a div with the class of my div as before. So if you're used to standard development where we simply type everything out manually, you can see already how much time and effort we're spending. We could also do things with an ID. So if we delete this, we could use the hashtag for simply an ID and already you can see that Emmet is suggesting a div with the ID of something. If we add an ID of header, for example, we could hit tab and already we have a new div with the ID of header. We're not simply limited to only using divs though. We could have a P for a paragraph with the class of para. And when we hit tab, we now get the class with para on our P tag. And this can go for a variety of different elements. So if we had any elements such as a form, we could have an ID of my dash form and a class of potentially full width. And when we tab out here, we get the form with an ID of my form and the class of full width. So already, I think you can tell right now that Emmet is definitely worth your time as far as learning. So all of this here can be characterized as ID and class attributes. And that's simply done by using the class of my div. Using the ID of hash header, we'll move this one up to the class of paragraph. And this one is a form with both the ID of my form and the class of full width. Now I want to look at how we can make children elements inside of the DOM. So if we, for example, had a navigation element, and that had an unordered list and a list item, we could use the nav. And then if we use the greater than sign, that allows us to make an item one component down. So if we had a UL, you can see that Emmet is telling us right here that we have this nav and then a UL. And if we did the same, we then have an LI. If we hit tab, you can see it's generated us a navigation element with a UL and an LI. But what if we wanted to make multiple LI? Well, that's something we'll look at in more detail in a moment. But for now, we can see that if we simply use the UL, go down one into an LI, and then we use the multiplication, the asterisk, for as many as we want. So if we said four, you'd see that we'd have four LI elements. Let's now take a look at how we can make sibling elements. So this would be, for example, a div, then a p tag, and then perhaps something like a span. Well, in order to achieve the same result, we could use div and then a plus sign for that p tag, and then a plus sign again for that span. You can see in our Emmet abbreviation that we have a div, a p, and then a span. And if we hit tab, we get the same code. 
Another thing that this does for us is at this moment in time, our cursor is selected inside of the div. If we were to type something such as hello, and then we press the tab key, we automatically go down to the next element. Another thing that this does is that it centers our cursor on the text part of our div. So we can either elect to add more elements inside, or if we simply typed something like hello, and then we hit tab, we now go into the P tag and that text element. So now we could say world, and if we hit tab again, we now get inside of the span in which we could perhaps add another P. And inside of that, we could add a smiley face. So this saves a lot of time when we're creating multiple elements and we know exactly what's going to go in the middle. Let's combine these things together. So if we had a div and underneath that, we had another div that inside of that had a paragraph tag. And then perhaps inside of the paragraph tag itself, it had a block quote. And we'll look at how we can shorten this so we don't have to type out block quote in a second. But then if we wanted to use the up arrow, we could then add an EM. And what this does is it shifts the EM up one. So you'll notice now if we hit tab, we have this very strange set of DOM elements, but we initially started with a div and then we have a div, which has a P, a block quote inside of that P, but then instead of the EM coming after our div, we are shifting it up one. So let's return to that snippet and investigate it further. If for example, I used a plus, you'll see that our EM would actually be inside of this paragraph tag. So what we're doing is we're essentially shifting it up. So it's outside of that P element. We could do the same if we took our block quotes and shifted up twice, and then we had our EM, you'll now see that it's outside of the P element and it's also outside of the div. So we now have a div, which has a div with a P, a block quote, end div, and then the EM. But perhaps you don't want to type this block quote every time. Instead, we could use BQ and that would give us block quotes we could do things like BTN for the Emmet abbreviation for a button. Other things like BTN colon D or colon R or even colon S gives us different types. So if we said BTN colon D, we'd have a disable button. Colon S would be type submit and BTN colon R would simply be type reset. So you can now see that not only can we abbreviate a variety of different things, but also we can infer their type with a colon. So this spans out to everything from inputs. If we had an input of type text, we could use input colon text. This fills us with an ID and a name as well, should we wish. But we have inputs of buttons, checkbox, color, everything you'd need. So when we want to infer a type of something, we do use that colon. We can continue our journey and let's take a look at things like multiplication and also numbering our items. So we looked at multiplication earlier on when we had UL that had a specific amount of LIs using the UL, the greater than LI, and then timesing it by 10. As you can see, we have a variety of different LIs tend to be specific. We can also take this further and give this LI a particular class name. So if we had a UL with an LI, we can give this a class using the dot syntax. So if this was list dash item, and then we times it by five, this would give us five separate LIs with the class of list item. But also if we wanted to give these things an ID, so if we went to UL LI and now instead of using the dot syntax, we could give an item with a hashtag. We could use the dollar syntax and that would give us a particular ID number when we go to use the asterisk five. As you can see in our abbreviation, 
we then have item one, two, three, four, and five. All of these things have been generated for us when we use Emmet. If we want to add attributes to our elements, we can also do that. For example, if we had a specific need to have a H1, we could then use the array-like syntax with our square brackets to perhaps give this an attribute. Perhaps we had something like size, and that would be equal to 10. And if we use times four, you'd see that we'd have an attribute of size equal to 10. That obviously does nothing at this point, but it simply just shows us that we could add multiple attributes on multiple elements. We could also take advantage of counters. So in a similar way than we did before, you'll notice that we have this dollar element and the dollar element allows us to, for example, say H dollar. And if we said times two or times three, you could see that we have this H1, H2, H3. So the dollar is automatically inferring that number and adding it to our abbreviation. So when we use H dollar times four, that gives us a H1, a H2, H3, and H4. So we could even take this further by using H dollar, and that would use one, two, or three when we come to multiply it. We could add a particular variable such as size, and that could be also equal to the dollar, which is that incrementer. We could increment this by five. That would give us a H1, a H2, H3, and so on, with the attributes of also that number. Not terribly useful at this point in time, but you can see that this can be done with the accumulator. Now we can also add text to our elements if we want. So if we had a H1, we could then use the curly braces, or the object-like syntax. And inside of here, we could bind header text. And when we do that, and we expand our abbreviation, we get the H1 with the header text, like so. We could also add an accumulator here if we had the header text. And I'm going to add a dash for a dollar. And then all we need to do is simply times that by however many we want. So if we had three, we'd have three header texts with that dollar. So I hope you can see the power of that accumulator and that's how we would use it to generate a variety of different elements. When it comes to things like text, we could do the same thing as before. So we could have a P with the braces of hello world. And this will give us some text with hello world. When it comes to using text, we could also bind to P and say hello. We could add an A element inside of our P. We could also do things like world. And when we expand this, we have a P that says hello. We then have an A tag with the text of world, and then it ends our P. Other things we can do in HTML when we want to generate a new document, we could simply use doc, and that generates us a new HTML document. It gives us a title, it gives us the appropriate meta tags, and so on. Other things we can do is use the HTML, and also HTML colon five. We get a very similar response, if not the same. But the tooling doesn't stop at HTML, though. We can also head over to a CSS file. And inside of CSS, we have things, for example, if we had a class of my header. And inside of here, we could do things like pos for position. And as soon as we tab that, we get position relative. If we used a pos and a colon, we could use pos colon s, and that gives us position static. Other things like A for absolute. You can see how this continues. There are all the different variables for position. Other things like background gives us with BG for the abbreviation. Other things like margin we can have for M10 for margin 10. And this can be extended for any number. So if we had M22, it would give us a margin of 22 pixels. The same goes for padding for P20. DN also gives us things like display none. DB for things like display block and so on. You can imagine there's so many tags for Emmet in CSS and in HTML. Take advantage of all of these abbreviations and you can sure save a lot of time when it comes to your daily day-to-day -day tasks in HTML and CSS.
Another thing that I did forget as far as our HTML goes is that we can also group elements. So if we, for example, had a div and we wanted to group elements inside of this div, so for example, we have multiple elements that we want to contain in one container, we could surround our div inside of these parens. And this then allows us to add other elements. For example, if we had a UL and an LI, we now have a UL and an LI inside of our div. We could then continue to potentially add another div outside of this div, which then has things like a P, a span, and a variety of other content. If we hit tab on this, you can see that we then have this nested div, which does have things like a UI and an LI inside of it. So we've grouped that together. But then we also have another div, which has a P and a span inside, all as part of the same initial abbreviation. We could add classes at any point to these things. So my span, potentially give this an ID of my paragraph. And once we tab this out, you can see that these things have IDs and classes. So hopefully I don't need to convince you anymore that Emmet is awesome and you should be using it inside of your workflow. Let me know what you think of this video and what other videos you'd like to see inside of the comments section below. Don't forget to check out paulhalliday.io for more courses and free content. And until next time, I'll see you very soon in that next video.